you have to understand how media works when you talk about PR in media. That all this, all this hype, it is uh, brought by media. They need money and they need to sell uh, their pages, then to sell advertising on these pages. That's why this hype happens. That's why Elon Musk is popular because it drives traffic to the news websites. Hey Alex. Hi Abir. Thank you for coming, uh, you know, to the podcast Technology for Change. You are a co-founder for uh, PRNews.io, and uh, you've helped companies transform their PR through connecting them with media outlets. And uh, you know, it's I'm assuming it's been an exciting journey. So yeah. tell us about how you got started. Yeah, we started like 15 years ago. Uh, actually, PR News uh, was born by another project, B2Blogger.com. It was a newswire distribution service. Uh, in Ukraine and Russia, and it was founded, I don't know, back in 2005 by our founder, uh, Alex Storozhuk, and he was studying in uh, university. And uh, uh, from day one, we are working with Bitwalker and PR News. We are following our uh, customers. We do what our customers want, and we make business of it. We don't want to, come to um, transform their way of doing uh, business, but we want to follow them. And that's why before it was press release distribution service. So we took press release from our customer and tried to send it to any media relevant to them and hope for results. And, and uh, the results were good. We were good in this job. But uh, sometimes our customers told us that uh, last time I was featured, I don't know, in some media, but that time my press release wasn't caught up by this media. Uh, and uh, we asked this media, how we can feature our customer in this one. They told us um, last time the press release, uh, it was really newsworthy, it was good, but this time it's more um, commerce focused and we are ready to publish it for money. And we, then we understood that there is a market for uh, sponsored content for editorials. And we started to ask uh, other media uh, about how much it will cost to get our customer featured there and they named our prices, we put our commission on top and sold it to our customers. Uh, at the beginning we did that at the b2blogger.com uh, website, but then 2014 happened and Russia invaded Ukraine and annexed Crimea, and we understood that uh, there will be no way to work now in this uh, with the uh, in Russian market, so we have to go west. And we understood that the brand name Bitblogger and, uh, was really not talking about what we do there. And uh, we changed it and we started to build a new uh, platform, PRNews.io. It was before the ICOs. Uh, that's why they have this uh, IO <laughs> domain. It is not connected to ICO, but people asked us in 2018 about that. <laughs> well... And, and we've had a conversation, uh, you know, earlier about uh, how many times you guys had to pivot, how many experiments that you guys made uh, to get to this point, uh, which is pretty commendable. Um, you guys have a 50 people team, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, spread out uh, globally and, uh, you know, you're, you're uh, climbing up the revenue charts as well. So tell me about some of the experiments that you took um, while, you know, getting to this point as a marketer um, and um, how... What did you learn from your failures and how did, how did the successes impact you? Yeah, uh, at first, uh, the idea when we started PR News uh, to have this marketplace for sponsored content, it was one of the products we wanted to sell on PR News. The idea was to create a SaaS platform where people just uh, put their press release and uh, spread it uh, at the, I don't know, list of the journalists they know and uh, uh, send it to them, like CRM for PR. The idea was that. But we made some mistakes, and uh, from day two, when we launched, there were a lot of people who started to use our platform as uh, spam, mm -hmm. <laughs> for to, to send spam. And we understood, stop, come on, <laughs> people don't upload the list of journalists they want, they just upload the list of people they want to scam. And uh, we um, just uh, cut off this feature and focused on PR News Marketplace. And marketplace, it's every time developing feature. It's uh, we like to tell that it's Amazon, uh, but for articles in media. The process of publishing there now is pretty simple. You go to a huge marketplace, 
with more than 100,000 uh, media outlets there to choose from. You choose the media you like, you see the price, how much it will cost to put the sponsored post there. You pay the price, you add the text, it goes live there. You are satisfied, it usually takes uh, from one hour to 24 hours um, average to get published in any media in the world. And we can do that um, simultaneously on various websites. For example, if you have a campaign, you want to be published in your country on 100 media outlets, you can do it with us like in one day. You cannot do it with uh, any other instrument. That's why we also like to talk about us, not about like PR company, but also PR tech company, because there is a lot of tech involved with that, uh, which is not seen uh, for our customers from outside, but it is inside the platform. All this stuff, how we have to get money from our customers and send money to our partners, to the publishers, it's really techy. And we also use a lot of uh, stuff like we... Uh, put together data from other sources like Simmer Web, our partner for data about the visits information about the websites, or other um, friends like Hrefs, they provide our SEO data about the websites we we added. So we have to connect all of that on our platform. But of course, like favor, favor, we faced favor on day two, <laughs> and uh, we still have uh, features uh, have some problems right now, but uh, like. I like to say that uh, mm, uh, traffic rules are written with blood. You know, the saying uh, that yeah. if there is a rule, there was someone, uh, uh, someone died before this rule happened. And uh, our favorites are, are on our website. When you open the, any publication page on our website, you see a long list of conditions of getting published there. Hmm. And these were our favorites. Like, at first, it was a short list. We'll be published how long it will take. Can you use a backlink or can you use a, a picture? Now there is a list. Will this appearance will be temporary or permanently? Will it be, can you use YouTube or not? Because we face these problems on our um, work, uh, work when our customers wanted to distribute a YouTube video or some, I don't know, feature, and they cannot do that because media doesn't accept it. And that's why we have this list of our failures, and now we transfer them into features for our customers. So now you can find the best media to feature you, uh, to find uh, which one will publish you uh, quickly, which one will publish you with the default link, which one with, will publish you with a, a big picture or with an um, embed uh, YouTube video, or uh, will it be... Uh, sent to um, news aggregators like Google News and etc. etc. Everything is listed there. And to find out that, we have to favor at least one time. Interesting. So uh, let's take a step back to your own story and how it uh, comes into play with uh, PRnews.io. Um, who were you before you joined uh, Blogger, um, you know, that the community that you started with your founder or even PRnews.io? And uh, how did you come into PR? Yeah, it's a really interesting story because uh, uh, like co-founder uh, of PR News, Bitblogger and PR News, uh, Alex, I know him from uh, childhood. We were living in the same area same block in uh, back in the small town of Mykolaiv, Ukraine. It's maybe, we call it, we can call it small town uh, when you talk about like, think about American cities and everything, but it's uh, half a million people. And uh, then we started in the same school. We started in the same university, but we were like friends, like not, not really close friends. But uh, after we ended school, I went to sales. I started sale to sell cars. I went to car dealership. And in a short period, I uh, grow from uh, car sales to the head of the brand. I represented Kia <laughs> in the uh, Mykolaiv region. And um, it was really nice. Um, the problem was that I, I couldn't drive a car <laughs> that <laughs> days. But uh, if you want to sell something, you don't need to drive it. You need to, to tell people to make drive them. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, started the crisis of 2008, uh, and uh, I switched the jobs. Uh, someone offered me a job uh, in uh, insurance business. I headed the insurance um, company branch in the second city from Mykolaiv in uh, Kherson. 
and I went there. Then the insurance business started to collapse too because of the car, car sales, you remember maybe these, day, these years, and uh, it was a problem everywhere. Yeah. People were overcredited and they took everything and uh, now they have to pay their bills and they couldn't and uh, their car market and insurance market collapsed. And then um, I met Alex and he told me about his project he has, uh, this bitablogger.com, and he told me that he needs uh, help with sales. And uh, the first thing I did, I joined Bitblogger to um, sell more stuff, what, what we had that days. And I created uh, this process of uh, uh, finding, I, from my previous experience, I understood you don't need to face uh, every customer yourself. You need to find the place where a lot of customers. And obviously for PR services, there were PR agencies. So we made our first newsletter, uh, called out resources letter to PR agencies in Ukraine, and we found our first um, customers. One of them uh, was an agency who represented Siemens, uh, McDonald's, uh, Fly UA, and other big uh, companies there, and it helped us to boost our business. We have first um, uh, systematic customers. Interesting. So it almost feels like you were led into this role of head of marketing instead of studying for this or experiencing this you it was more of a trial by fire for you you know yeah yeah so yeah but how does uh you know how does that kind of differ um do you do you look at other people who are you know who've studied marketing and sort of uh you know actually had a career in marketing uh, and then compare yourself who are who's a marketer uh because it was the need of the R. And, uh, you know, you're obviously leading a multi-million dollar business now in the marketing space. So how do you sort of differentiate yourself? How do you feel about that when, when you meet marketers that are, you know, thoroughbred marketers and yourself, uh, you know, who kind of evolved into this role? Yeah. Actually, in the PR news, I'm like head of marketing, but I also a co-founder. And so I'm involved in any other activities we have. And uh, from one side, it is a problem that I'm not involved in marketing a lot, but it also I see opportunities. I oh, we always work on um, building our product, creating new three features for our product. Um, and but it's also marketing because like four P's uh, is there, product is there, and. Um, I like to study from other people. There are like people like which really uh, impressed me, like Neil Patel. We talked about uh, that yesterday, <laughs> yeah. And also like Tim Solo from uh, Hrefs and uh, other people uh, which we like to follow. Yeah. And um, but good thing that in university, me and Alex, we studied um, uh, international uh, management and marketing. So I studied something of that uh, <laughs> back in my days. And uh, now I understand, oh, that was it. <laughs> that what we have to uh, understand better that days. Interesting. But uh, there was a problem that we were in a small city and we st stayed there. There were no like big companies to follow. Or if there were big companies there, they don't want to be public about their activities. The, you know that Ukraine is an IT nation. We have a lot of uh, great IT developers, IT products uh, back from Ukraine. And uh, but they are most of them are focused on other countries, and that's why they don't want to talk about them like about Ukrainian companies. Like last year, where well, years it changed, <coughs> and people are proud to be Ukrainians. But before in Mykolaiv, there are like big companies, but they don't tell that they are Ukrainian companies, and uh, they don't share information. Mm. Uh, there are no like big marketing community back in Mykolaiv. Interesting. And when we when we talk about PR and obviously, you know, you're kind of in the uh, in the middle of it uh, in terms of uh, positioning companies uh, in different media outlets. Um, so let's say, you know, an entrepreneur or a business owner or, you know, um, a business wants to actually conduct their PR activities. What's the first thing that you would tell them when they're, you know, creating their brief or you know, creating the content or, or just essentially thinking about um, PR as a whole. What's the first thing that they should do before they start outreaching to media outlets or coming to you to connect them? Yeah, uh, in PR, we are more focused on uh, working with media 
That's why for me, PR is mostly working with media. That's why I'm, now, why I'm not so really good with this government relations and everything. But I think that uh, when you want to do PR, you have to do that on day zero, not only on day one, on day 10, when you start your company. In the beginning, you need to understand that sometime in the future, it will influence your business a lot. If you want to, don't want to be public, uh, you'll, be, you'll become successful enough and your PR brand will be built, but not your but your competitor. It, it can be bad. Because if you don't feel this gap in media about you or you and your company, someone else will fill that gap for you. And that's why you have to uh, do that from the beginning. And I think that uh, I'm more, I like things measured, that maybe the first thing to do is to create this, I don't know, a, de a spreadsheet with all the mentions you have in media right now to start to um, list them from day one and also to create the messages you want to spread out and also to uh, build the list of media you want to be featured in and understand how you can get there. Hmm. So for me, you know, as a marketer myself, um, of course, PR has a very direct correlation with marketing and, uh, you know, getting the word out there. Um, you know, getting in front of the right customers, um, but also from a brand perspective, it's it's a very good approach to position yourself. You you very aptly mentioned that if you don't do it yourself, somebody else will do it for you, and then that sticks. Um, so how do you uh, what what like you know a, a, with a company that's uh, on the path to finding themselves, you know, defining their core values or message or mission, um, should they be going towards PR right off the bat or should they first find out their why before they go out there? Maybe you have to start with the personal brand of the founders to build that. Then it will be easier for you to build your company brand. Yeah, it will go naturally with you. It will associate it with you. And uh, I think that if you're an entrepreneur, you have to understand who are you and you have these values you want to show the world and you can start to build PR with that. Uh, just uh, mm, sharing your experience, uh, giving uh, good advices about what to do, and you can uh, reach out to media to share that. Mm. And then it will come naturally, and uh, when the company will grow, it will also benefit from your personal brand. But uh, yeah, sometimes company pivot, sometimes company die, companies die. That's why maybe it's not like um, we don't like also companies. I don't like companies who have PR but don't have product behind that. But um, it uh, can be different. Uh, there are different approaches. I think Bezos told that uh, if you want to build a product, first thing you have to do is write a press release about its launch. And then you have to build a product which will uh, be the same as you described in press release. Interesting. Uh, and that kind of takes me to the next question that I wanted to ask. Um, it was a very... Um, great example, by the way. Um, there is a lot of hype around, uh, you know, different things that before they're launched. <coughs> um, I, I remember this marketing ploy that, uh, you know, Tesla used to push out their trucks. Yeah. It was pure genius. I think, uh, you know, case studies would be written about this like in ages to come. Um, but that also kind of goes into that direction of being too much. Um, there's so much clutter out there. There's so much noise, so much, uh, you know, this this age is also called the age of influencers, right? With yeah. the advent of social media and everything else. How does a company stand out in a situation like this? And how can your company help, you know, a client that wants to position themselves in a very, very competitive space um, using PR? Uh, interesting question. Um I think that um, I know how, how we can help with that, <laughs> but I'm trying to understand. Um, you have to understand how media works when you talk about PR in media, that all this, all this hype, it is uh, brought by media. They need money and they need to sell uh, their pages than to sell uh, advertising on these pages. That's why this hype happens. That's why um, Elon Musk is popular, because it drives traffic to the news websites. And uh, we also experimented with that. We also created some news on our PR news and it uh, on our PR news blog, 
which will bring hype to us. It was really nice. We have like um, a lot of traffic to these articles, but they fell down. We couldn't convert it into something. But if you are media, it is okay. You can convert it into advertising you sell on these pages. That's why, and uh, that's why you can work with media. You need to bring something really newsworthy. Understand that if you want to pitch them, to present your company, uh, you have to understand that they have to sell this news to their advertisers who will uh, see that. That's why your news has to be always disrupting. And, uh, but in another way, um, um, not always disruption features happen with the company. There are like everyday news, but you also need to share them for different reasons. You have new CTO, you have uh, you go to conference to Dubai, or you have to I don't know some minor change in your uh, terms and conditions. But you also have to bring this message to your customers. In this case, uh, paid uh, media can work for you, and in this case, PR news can help you with that. And uh, you can come to us, you can bring press, your press release and you can publish it anywhere in the world you need. And uh, also get other features from that. Because uh, I think that people, they, uh, when they have some, make some big decisions, they can Google your company, your name, uh, what you do. And if they see the recent news about your company, uh, it can influence their decision and they can work with you or not. If they don't see, if they don't like it. And also, like I told before, if you are not building your profile online, someone else can build it for you. Uh, that's why you have to be in media all the time with minor news and major news. Uh, and you have to use different approaches. If you have some major news, you can use influencers, pitch them, or you can go to journalists directly and work with them, and they will publish you for free. Like, you, But you have to build your online brand. But if you have some things, uh, news, like minor news, or you have news that you want to be, be there uh, at the time you need, on the conditions you need, you can go to sponsored posts and editorials, and we are your guys. Hmm. Interesting. So let's take a tangent here uh, from a standpoint of partnerships. Um, now, I understand that... Uh, you know, PR uh, agencies definitely come up as downstream partners for um, PR Newsweb, um, PR News IO, and, and it allows you to uh, sort of, uh, you know, get affiliate traffic and sort of conversions from these partners. But what value addition do you think these PR agencies have on your clients? Um, how do you think, you know, because I'm sure you've worked with clients that have worked with PR agencies and worked with clients that have come in as individuals or perhaps with SEO people as well. So how do you think PR agencies specifically add value to the to the value chain? Yeah, uh, we love to work with agencies. Uh, there are people who understand what they want, but they don't have time. And uh, they, have, uh, they have customers who are drilling uh, holes in their head that they want to distribute something. And we are the guys who can deliver, deliver in the terms and conditions which are clear for everyone and that's why we like to work with them and they like to work with us because like uh, with the us you can spread your news uh, go there like uh, in in one day for example we have customers who has a, i don't know taxi service in europe and when they want to study the um, african market and for and they have a pr agency who serve them in in europe and the first thing they do, they ask them, can you do news in uh, Africa? And uh, agencies can come to us and uh, find the biggest media outlets uh, in Nigeria, in Kenya, and any other country, and to test how it works, how people react to that with these paid articles there. And that's why we help agencies to uh, not to tell no to customer, because uh, customer always has to have to be satisfied and you have to deliver uh, their PR to customer as soon as possible. And we help uh, agencies with that. Also, uh, we help with the international PR. It, uh, it's maybe um, not a problem in, inside Europe to pay to other companies, but if you want to go to other countries, like to Asia, to uh, Africa or to Southern America, it can be a problem to do international payments and everything, even if you want to get featured uh, 
for sponsored posts to buy sponsored posts I don't know in Hong Kong or in other country and uh, in that case it is easier for them to pay to European country in Estonia and get their PR done in any other point in the world hmm. and and we also spoke about some of the um, you know technology components that are part of uh, you know PR news IO and how they make uh, the platform different and sort of add value uh, to the users that are coming on there. I want you to kind of go through that uh, component to, you know, sort of make the users that are coming on the website understand how, what all they can get out of the product. And then also go into what the future looks like in terms of the tech um, enablement side of uh, PR news and, and how do you feel you know that's going to be transformative to the industry as a whole yeah yeah we have uh, a lot of tech we have a lot of apis we use in our service to get the latest information about the media uh, because the one of the biggest problems our customers face is to find the right media to promote themselves another problem is to what to uh, pitch to them what to write to them and we help to find the right media that's why we have to rely on data from other services we connect and also we need to bring more media all the time to our platform and we use a lot of automatization uh, in our process we also need to push media to get the articles uh, published because uh, when the, we are small or maybe we had 1000 media uh, on our platform it was easy we know everyone in this area but now we have media from china from south korea from australia and uh, the time difference and uh, any other things and a lot of uh, efforts are made to push the article for example if a customer want to publish their article in australia but they have like tired big time difference our task will be that the australian editor will get the article as soon as possible that he will publish it on the terms the customer needs and get it back to him with a platform and it's a lot of like i don't know maybe not technology but automatization and we are working now on technology of delivering the news to some platforms like uh, with some media we work with the um, xml and json files so we just can publish on their website in, in seconds. And it also technology connected to us. Uh, also technology uh, connected with, we um, gave an opportunity our customers, our publishers to connect their Google Analytics to the platform. So after you publish article on some website, you can see in life how many visits that web website this article has. And you can influence that. You can uh, order uh, Facebook ads or other ads to bring more traffic to this article if it performs. Uh, but now with this uh, GA4, Google Analytics 4, it's complicated. People are not used to it. Uh, that's now we stopped this feature for some time, but we want uh, to renew it as people understand how it works, how to share this data with us. And imagine you can see in your dashboard how many visits your article has, and now you can understand which media works for you, which m media doesn't, and to see the opportunities. Also, uh, some additional features for marketers. Uh, some of the media, they gave you an opportunity to um, put the um, um, zero pixels from LinkedIn and Facebook in their news pieces. So later you can focus people who read, read your article on Facebook and, and LinkedIn. And uh, so there will be warmed up auditorium so you can just send your uh, pictures to them also some of the media can uh, do um, uh, frames and uh, embed things and you can i don't know put the um, pdf in frame and see how people look your pdf which is hosted on the no, on your domain and you see and you can communicate communicate with that people right and yeah also we have a lot of plans for future we want to introduce uh, other types of sponsored content to our to our platform like uh, you can you in future you will buy uh, mentions uh, with in influencers or uh, mentions in podcasts mentions in in-flight magazines and maybe someday in printed media yeah, common thing and yeah we have big plans for that
but it is another task. It's another process. That is very interesting. And I think uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of, uh, you know, PR news at IO come up in the news. Uh, <laughs> but, but sort of walk me through your growth so far. Um, you know, like what were the biggest pivotal moments when things um, seemed like they were growing too fast and you guys perhaps weren't able to catch up? Or you were and you were excited. So, you know, sort of walk me through the story of growth for yeah. you guys. Yeah, we never used investing money. Um, back in 2014, we uh, sold our Bitwalker project too and we got money to found fund <coughs> for PR News. And uh, uh, from starting, we were bootstrapping and investing all the money uh, we had into our platform into developing the project. That's why we never had like just re really boost of money. We don't know how, where to spend. Uh, we had a significant boost in uh, autumn and December of 2021, and we have big, huge plans for 2022. Uh, but war in Ukraine happened, and uh, like 2022 and 2023 was uh, um, a period we have to switch, we have to change our process a lot because we used to work in one office in Mykolaiv. It was okay, everyone was ready for that, but. People start, they spread out all the Europe. Uh, we have now office in Tallinn. It is uh, now our main office, but we also um, opened office again in, U in Mykolaiv, in Ukraine. And it was like a big thing. Uh, it was like pivotal time because we have to understand which market we have to focus right now, what we have to sell uh, to our customers and which uh, media we have to connect uh, at, the, at the first place. And to rebuild a lot of processes inside because uh, people work differently when they work uh, under uh, fire of aggressor. And, uh, but we have to adapt. We have to find the ways how to, to work with that. Mm. Yeah, and uh, that's why uh, we have like, I don't know, uh, pause phase uh, in uh, our development for 2022, but we started to grow again in 2023. And we have big plans for this year. We want to uh, double. Uh, we have plans, real plans, to double our uh, revenue this year. Wow. And, and we know how to do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm in Dubai <laughs> yeah. meeting with customers. And how was that? Like, uh, I know that you guys have been, uh, you know, part of the IFX uh, three years in a row now. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm assuming there must be other conferences that you go to as well. Um, how does that sort of lead into um, your market? What are, what is it that you do in these conferences that impacts your business? Uh, and what have you seen so far, you know, in the previous ones? Why well, I think that uh, IFX was the first uh, financial conference and maybe big conference we visited uh, three years ago, and. Um, uh, we want to go to the conferences and to see the custom, meet the customers, potential customers, um, with the businesses who are um, oriented, who think about their uh, image a lot, because they are. When you people want to trust your money, uh, you with your money, you have to believe in these companies. That's why we understand we had uh, customers from uh, financial sphere before, from trading sphere before, and we understood that we have to face all of them, and uh, IFX is one of that places. We also have a lot of customers from e-commerce, that's why we visit a lot of e-commerce uh, uh, conventions uh, throughout the world. And also, like financial sphere, companies uh, who, who has a, a lot of money, they spend a lot on PR, and that's why they can uh, be introduced to our project, to our solution, and spend money with us. And uh, we also understood that um, if you want to succeed uh, with uh, events, you don't have to visit one event and try to analyze that. You have to go events in a row because people have to trust you also. They need to see your faces, that they also can trust you with PR because PR is also a delicate thing. You don't share everything. And there were like big... Uh, uh, scandals with the PR industry before, like with big, big things which were hacked to see the news which will be open tomorrow, for example. That's why sometimes people give us information which will be 
introduced uh, in, in days. Um, unfortunately, Apple doesn't send us their press releases <laughs> and we don't see what will be in the next iPhone. But I hope that one day it, it will happen and uh, we'll see this, this thing, these companies among our customers too. And uh, yeah, this, uh, that's why we go to conferences, because you need to meet people in person. And another problem with our project, uh, with our marketplace, that people don't believe that it really works. When they come to our website, they see, come on, it's some bullshit that uh, you can just buy article in media because people are common with working with the PR agencies or PR specialists, that you have to hire a PR agency, you have to pay them tens, thousands for three months in advance, and first month they will study you, next month they will create your strategy, and third month you'll get your first uh, appearance in media. But they don't believe that you can do that in one hour and to hit the major media in two days. That's why it is hard to convince people to use our platform when you do it online. That's why offline things really help. And we also, one of the best channels for acquiring new customers is uh, uh, recommendations of our existing customers. Because people say, come on, this thing works and uh, it, they, they deliver. And uh, that's why it's uh, going to conferences, it's also, or expos, it's also um, a chance to meet our uh, proud customers uh, and see them, make photos, uh, yeah, exchange presents and everything. Brilliant. Um, so in terms of, uh, and, and I know we had a discussion about uh, community as well and how, um, you know, that could potentially have a multiplier effect on the value that you're giving to your clients. Um, as well as to, you know, develop trust and engagement and, and sort of uh, connection with them. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, some of your plans and, you know, establishing and sort of incorporating a community element towards uh, PR News um, and, and how do you see that, you know, transforming uh, the industry as a whole? Because to me, the concept that you guys have come up with is, is sort of disruptive and, and I feel like not a lot of people know about it yet. Um, how do you see community sort of helping with that? Yeah, uh, we want to build a community because now we already have it and we want to uh, introduce more sites to this community. Now we have customers who want to buy articles in media. Obviously, we need someone who can write articles for them. Obviously, we need someone who can plan the campaigns in media for them. And maybe there will be introduced two new types of people to our platform like uh, copywriters and uh, PR uh, companies and as examples. And uh, so they will communicate with each other, build something new with the help of uh, this community they found on PR News. And uh, we also have to, uh, we want to plan, actually after we met yesterday, we have this uh, brainstorming with the team which were here about how can we, what we can make for our customers uh, so they will be involved in uh, working with us even if they don't have newsworthy features, features to share right now. And we are thinking about how to th be build that thing. Also, like in community, in PR sphere in some countries, um, there are a lot of uh, women in PR. And uh, one of the um, business developers, Natalie, she created this uh, Her PR Story project now on our website. And it started like maybe one month ago and we have already tens articles about women and their PR story. And we want to build community on, on basis of that. Because now in a month, they already have an idea of having an um, expo or having a PR, women PR conference because people want that. People face this problem. People have this salary gap and uh, with the help of this community, then can uh, help help each other. Well, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's okay. why if you are women in PR, please join her PR story. <laughs> I will connect you with Natalia and uh, she will be happy to meet you. And uh, definitely do that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, it seems like you have a lot of exciting things happening, uh, you know, in the near future. What are you most excited about? Uh, there is always something to do. 
I'm always happy to go to work because it is always something it's, it drives me crazy. Uh, I spend a lot of time work. Maybe it's not good for my work-life balance. <laughs> I want to <laughs> have a family life more. But I introduced my wife to our company. <laughs> That's why for me it's like also a family business. And also like uh, our other co-founder, wife, Natalie, she's... Uh, oh, Natalie, that's, she's that's the one? Okay. Yeah, she's a wife of our founder. Okay. And uh, my wife, Alina, she's working with us. And we have like these uh, families inside our company, uh, other, other people too. And uh, maybe for someone it sounds like uh, uh, not, not good, not okay, but like... Uh, Last month, uh, we have a new employee, and uh, after that, on one-to-one, -one, she told me that at first she was uh, afraid that it's, she saw that the, uh, our wives are working with us. Uh, she said, come on, well, what's the thing? But uh, she, then she tell, tells me that she understood that these are the top-notch, top-rated uh, specialists. And it happened that we are lucky, and they are <laughs> our wives, they are our relatives. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's, that's, uh, that is one way of uh, having work-life balance yeah um so you know how do you you mentioned that you're always excited to work and and because there's always things to do but how do you sort of keep your energy up like with i, I don't know i'm assuming there's obviously stressful times there's obviously things that happen then that, that bring you down how do you get back into it how do you you know, brush that, brush whatever it is that you're facing off and go like, okay, no, today is another day. So how do you build that mentality? I think that uh, family helps. Uh, I have two kids. Uh, I have my, my beautiful wife and uh, spend time with them. Uh, we like to travel a lot. And Estonia, from uh, one of its benefits, of a lot of Estonia has a lot of benefits. One of the benefits, it's a nice place to travel. They have a beautiful inside tourism. Yeah, you can go to the swamps, they call rabas in Estonia. You never knew before that uh, swamps can be so beautiful, so nice place to spend your time. So you can go to sea, sea base and everywhere. And uh, it's our common thing to go somewhere on uh, weekends. And it helps to connect with the nature, to share this connection with the uh, children, with family, with the friends. So happiness is only real when shared. And it's one of the things I like in life. I like to share happiness of, of doing something That's, together. Uh, that is beautiful. And I, I think we should definitely end the podcast on that note. Uh, but before we do, I just want to make sure that people that are looking for you, that want to connect with you, have some place to follow. So is there a way that they can you know, reach out to you if they need help? Um, is there yeah. any way? I think the best thing is to come to me to only my LinkedIn it's just search for Alex Nigmatulin, or you can reach me on uh, email alex at prnews.io. It's easy to, to see, <laughs> easy to find. Well, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about you and your adventures. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. And uh, I, I personally look forward to you know, using your services quite a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.